Ho ho ho, what do we have here? I love these kinds of questions, which are like calculus and trigonometry. Well, not, not the actual shapes part of trigonometry, but like the functions and calculus. It's all pretty fun. And this looks like an interesting and challenging question. So we're going to be doing it. So let's try to find the answers to these questions. Okay, so first, show that cosine a minus b minus cosine a plus b is 2 sine a sine b. Now, this makes use of an identity that you need to know, and it's about the cosine of an angle a plus an angle b and the cosine of angle a minus angle b. This is kind of the thing that you just know or you don't know. I'm fairly certain it's at the formula book in the front. And you'll need to just substitute in a and b, and you'll get this number. And then, hence express 2 sine 5x sine 3x in the form mx minus cos mx minus cos nx, where m and n are integers, giving the value of m and the value of n. All right, so this looks like this. This is just so similar to this. We can't ignore it. Okay, so it looks like 5x is our a, 3x is our b, and then we'll just find the cosine values by adding a and b together right here. All right, so that does not sound too bad. And then we'll need to integrate this. Now, this looks like it's in the same pattern as this. So this would just be equivalent to this, or rather, since this is 4, we can move the 4 out, so we'll get like 2, and we'll get another 2 here instead, so 2 times 2 times this is still equivalent to this, and it'll just be 2 times the integral of cosine mx minus cosine nx, and then since we know the integral of cosine ax, like for any a, um, I think we can integrate that, add it together to find the final value that we'll need to apply these bounds for. And then we'll just evaluate it and get our answer. All right, let's get started. So 5a, show that cosine a minus b minus cosine a plus b is 2 sine a sine b. All right, so we have the identity that Cosine a plus or minus b is cosine a cosine b minus plus. That just means if this is a plus, this is a minus. And if this is a minus, this is a plus. That's why it's upside down. Minus plus sine a sine b. So let's find cosine a minus b, so that would be cosine a minus b minus cosine a plus b. Cosine a minus b would be cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. minus cos a plus b, so minus cos a cos b minus minus sine a sine b. Okay, so minus cos a cos b. And since this is a minus, it's minus minus sine a sine b or plus sine a sine b. Now, this positive cos a cos b and this negative cos a cos b will cancel out. And you're left with sine a sine b plus sine a sine b, which is equal to 2 sine a sine b. Now, given we've proven this identity to be the case, and they want us to find 2 sine 3x sine 5x, or rather 2 sine 5x sine 3x, if you want to be precise about where the way the question is going, because it's likely that they'll ask you to do this. 
in this order rather than the other because it might give you different results. So 2 sine 5x sine 3x. Well, it looks like our a is 5x and our b is 3x. So this is equal to cos a minus b. So that's cos 2x minus cos a plus b. So that would be cos 5x plus 3x is 8x. So if we'll go back up, it's cos mx minus nx. So m is 2 and n is 8. Oh, my apologies. Cos of 8x, not just 8x. So m is 2, n is 8. Nice. So now we know that that is the case. We want to find the integral or the indefinite integral for 4 sine 5 theta sine 3 theta d theta. Now, what we can do here is this is really 2 times the integral of half of it. So this is equivalent to like 2 times the integral of 2 sine 5 theta sine 3 theta d theta. And since we know this is equal to cos 2 theta minus cos 8 theta, we'll just say it's 2 to the integral of cos 2 theta minus cos 8 theta d theta. And since integration can be distributed amongst pluses and minuses and all of that, we'll say it's 2 times the integral of cos 2 theta d theta minus 2 times the integral of cos 8 theta d theta. Now, this is actually in quite manageable chunks now. If you cast your mind back to whenever you did the chain rule in, in differentiation, and you can kind of see how it applies here, and you want to know how to integrate a trigonometric function, well, there's an easy trick which involves using the coordinate axes of the unit circle. So imagine you have the unit circle right here, but don't actually draw the circle, just draw the axes. You'll have this is the positive cosine side, this is the negative cosine side, this is the negative sine bit, and this is the positive sine bit. And since you have a positive cosine for this, in differentiation, when we're going clockwise, that would mean that in integration we have to go counterclockwise. So a positive cosine would integrate to a sine. And that's basically how we run this function. So like, if we want, say, say the integral of cosine is sine. The integral of sine is, well, let's go back one more step. It's negative cosine and so forth. So. Now using that knowledge and using our values here, let's actually perform these integrations. So the integral of cos 2 theta d theta is 1 over 2 sine 2 theta. So now you might be asking, where the hell did you get the 1 over 2 from? Well, if you cast your mind back to the chain rule, when you integrate sine 2 theta, I mean, when, when you differentiate sine 2 theta, because of the chain rule, when you're just differentiating sine u, and u is 2 theta, you'll get cos u and times du over d theta, which is just 2, you get 2 cos 2 theta. So 
overall gets multiplied by 2 because of this 2 here. So when we're integrating, because of this 2 here, we want to divide by 2 rather than multiply by 2. So that's why there's a 1 over 2. And the same is true for the other one. So the integral of cos 8 theta d theta will be 1 over 8 sine 8 theta. So this is minus 2, 1 over 8 sine 8 theta. And now let's uh, perform this multiplication here and here and then here and here to give us sine 2 theta minus 1 over 4 sine 8 theta. So this is our answer for the surprisingly hard one mark question there. But it's okay because we'll be able to use this to get marks next. Now. If we scroll back up to here, we just need to find the definite integral from 0 to pi over 6 of this. So let's take our formula for the indefinite integral here, sine 2 theta minus 1 over 4 sine 8 theta. So we know that the integral of 4 sine 5 theta sine 3 theta d theta is equal to Oh, 4 cos 5 theta cos 3 theta d theta is sine 2 theta minus 1 over 4 sine 8 theta. And since this is from pi over 6 to 0, we are looking at the upper bound of this minus the lower bound of this. So if you've seen this notation before, it basically means we're going to take this where theta is pi over 6 minus this where theta is 0. So when theta is equal to pi over 6 radians, then you'll get sine 2 theta, which is, oh wait, actually, let's draw the unit circle because it'll be easier to calculate angles and stuff this way. So 2 theta is pi over 3, which is here. And we know that the sine is root 3 over 2 because it's in this equilateral triangle. And the cosine is 1 over 2 if we need that. But we're just looking for the sine. So when it's pi over 6, we have root 3 over 2. And then minus 1 over 4 sine 8 theta. So 8 theta is 4 pi over 3. That's this angle. And since it's on this triangle here, this equilateral triangle here at the bottom of the unit circle, we know that this sine value must be root, like the negative of root 3 over 2. And this is minus root 3 over 2 times minus 1 over 4, which is positive root 3 over 8. So root 3 over 2 plus root 3 over 8. And then when theta is 0, it's sine 0 minus 1 over 4 sine 0. And we know that sine 0 is just 0. So when theta equals 0, the whole expression evaluates to 0. How wacky is that? All right, so it says give the answer in the form a root b over c, where a, b, and c are positive integers. And at this point, we just want to complete this addition. And this is really just using your knowledge of manipulating certs. So let's try and get the denominator to be same across both of these. We'll multiply both of these by 4. So you get 4 root 3 over 8 plus root 3 over 8. And we just add the like terms now. It becomes 5 root 3 over 8. So basically that is how you do this integration question.
you use the identity you found out in the previous question to convert it into something that you can integrate. And you integrate that to find the indefinite integral, and then you add your upper and lower bound, your pi over 6 and your 0 in this case, and then you just evaluate the sum it gives you. So it's this minus this. This just happened to be 0, so we're only taking this, because minus 0 doesn't do anything. All right, let's scroll down to the mark scheme and see if we got it correct. Now, just to remind us, we prove this is the case by substituting this identity in. We express this in the form cosine mx minus cosine nx because we said this 5x was a and this 3x was b and it ended up being cos 2x minus cos 8x. And then we found the indefinite integral of this using the identity we found earlier because we moved the two outside and we found that this was identical to the thing they asked us earlier in the question. So we had to use this fact. We had to change it into this first. Because this was really important. And then we integrate the trigonometric functions using our unit circle trick. Remember, integration is counterclockwise because you normally learn it later. And differentiation is clockwise because it's more straightforward. Duh. And we use that to find the indefinite integral and add our upper and lower bound, slap it on the end there and evaluate to get our final answer, which was five root three over eight. Okay, let's look at the mark scheme. Right, so that was question five. Okay, so we did this evaluation here, we got 2 sine cos b. Wait, okay, I am 100% sure the mark scheme has a typo here, so look out for that, because this is not possible. None of the terms in here are sine something cos something. So let's just give ourselves a tick for that anyway, because we know it's correct. And cos 2x minus cos 8x for the equivalent, yep, that's correct. Why? Because this is equal to cos 2x minus cos 2x, cos 8x. And then this integral is equivalent to 2 times the integral of cos 2 theta minus cos 8 theta d theta. Yep, that was correct. And it's 2 sine 2 theta over 2 minus sine 8 theta over 8 plus c. Well, this is a rather strange way of putting it, but I guess that is actually correct. We just chose to simplify it, so we'll give ourselves a tick for that. And then the integral from pi over 6 to 0 of 4 sine 5 theta sine 3 theta dx. It's just a definite version of this. You add, you're putting an upper and lower bound to this, and we evaluated it to be 5 root 3 over 8. Yep. All right, so that's 7 marks. Okay, now I want to make, make a reminder about the nature of these further pure mark schemes. Um, if you've solved the question correctly and you've laid out your intuition in a way that it's easy to follow and it's mostly accurate, the examiners will give you full marks for that question. It doesn't have to match up exactly with what's in the mark scheme. So any kind of mathematical method that you learned, as long as you explain it, will be fine in getting full marks for this paper. Thank you for watching.